Okay, so in the previous lecture, we were looking at modes of transportation. We explained briefly about modal, intermodal, and multimodal. In this lecture, we will expand on it, and then we will talk more about the various forms of transportation. So let's get going. So in this session, we'll look at transportation modes, looking at the road, maritime, rail, air, pipeline, and other so uh, modes. Then we'll also look at decision-making for transportation modes, what you need to consider when deciding whether to use air, ship, track, whatever you want to use, yeah. All right. So when we're talking about transportation mode, we discussed earlier, and also this, uh, we discuss also this in class intensively about what we understand by transportation mode. Um, the primary modes of transport, as we are aware, are road, maritime, or water transport, rail transport, and air transport pipeline, usually uh, underground for transporting of liquid, like uh, um, gas, like for petroleum gas, or crude oil, or sometimes even uh, refined oil, depends on the situation. So each mode of transport has its unique benefits. So knowing the method, their advantages and disadvantages are important. So you can carefully select what you need to do or which one, what you, yeah, which one will be appropriate for, for which particular activity we are talking about. Yeah, and so, let's look at the uh, effort. Transport. Air freight or air transport is generally the fastest mode of transportation for shipment exceeding uh, shipment exceeding 600 miles, like uh, very long distances. It's, it's good for such a uh, movement of goods. And when we say shipment in uh, logistics and transport is not only by sea, okay, it's normally a technical term means movement of logistics moving from one point to another ship. So we have um, air cargoes normally that are operated by private parcel companies uh, or private logistics companies such as FedEx, DHL, and the others. So the air freight uh, is conducive, uh, is capable for moving, wearing apparel, electronics, printed matter, machinery and parts, cut flowers and nursery stock, Auto parts and accessories, fruits and vegetables, metal, other photographic equipment, especially, I mean, things that uh, also need to be moved within short period, like vegetables and all that. Sometimes they could, or vegetables and fruits, they could be moved by air. I mean, sometimes, but these are expensive. Moving things by air is very expensive. So we need to be sure that it is needed. Otherwise, we look at other uh, uh, options like road or sea transport. So effort uh, has advantages uh, uh, of speed. So anytime you are late in moving something and there's an air option, it's likely to be faster than road and, and, and ship uh, or uh, maritime transport or water transport. It's also good for perishable product and for agent deliveries, air will be preferred. But look at the disadvantages. It's so expensive, as I said earlier. Transportation costs may be high, transit time, sometimes when the airlines move, they have to stop at a point and they continue. We also have increasing handling costs, uh, which are very, very uh, uh, high in some airports uh, around the world. Um, increasing loss and damage, and we also have belly freight, where uh, materials are kept at the belly of the, of the plane, so it is not inside the plane. So if it's not a cargo plane, then it's a passenger a plane and the things are kept at the belly and yeah, those are some of the options. So it may not be very conducive for all kinds of products. Let's look at the road transport. Let's be using the trucks. And it's the commonest in Ghana, of course. Um, and uh, we also, uh, road, road transport in Ghana include walking, bicycles, tricycles, and what I call aboboyarizations. Uh, for the aboboyers that we are using, yeah, Omaha, Kampu. You know, those, those kind of small, tiny trucks, so we we'll call them. And we have the vans or the trotro taxis, haulage trucks. All these are examples that you can find in Ghana. Um, yeah. 
um, the road transport advantages um, uh, that is they are flexible. You can, they can move from point. They can even they have ability to deliver to the customer at the doorstep of the customer. Unlike the F Air and Rail, it's also very affordable, especially in developing economies like Ghana. Everyone can afford road transport compared to rail and uh, air. Uh, road carrier disadvantages are limited limitations by highway weight and size. Some highways, uh, some roads don't permit certain weight or certain width, width or the size of trucks. So those ones may be difficult for trucks to use those roads if they are, there are bridges that limit the, uh, the truck to use it. The speed. Speed limitations. Highways normally have speed limits uh, in Ghana, like 80 kilometers on the average highway. You can imagine if you need something urgently delivered, it may take several hours to get there. Highway congestion, a lot of traffic, especially in the cities. and it's not conducive for large volumes of consignment because the vehicles cannot carry too large volume compared to uh, the, the ship or the uh, water transport or even the air. They have more capacity than the road transport. The classification of uh, truck carriers uh, may have uh, what we call the less than truck load, which is uh, about 150 to 10,000 pounds. That's typically for FedEx and DHL. Then we have truck load. Shipment which range from thousand ten thousand pounds and beyond. Okay, so we can also find out about Magdan. I don't know how it works, but Magdan is a case study that we can look at. Whether it's a truck load kind of classification or or less than truck load classification. <laughs> then we have um, road transport delays as an import, uh, important consideration when you are selecting modes. If it's about uh, roadside mode. If it's about uh, road transport, then uh, it's difficult to, to work with the delays. So highway congestion must be taken into consideration and see how we can overcome it. Otherwise, your, 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 your transport system can suffer. Then we have marine or ocean transport, which is uh, basically what we call cargo ship. Um, or people call it freighter. It carries goods and materials. This is normally conducive for large volumes of different types of goods over long distance or intercontinental, country, international. Yeah, it's very uh, useful. Uh, we have ball carriers, and these are uh, ship designed for transportation uh, of unpacked bulk cargo, such as cement, oil, grains, and coal. You know, And 40% of the world's merchant fleet are classified as bulk carriers. We have uh, types of ships that you can look at. Uh, we have the container ship, ball carrier, we talked about earlier. We have tanker ships, we have passenger ships, we have naval ships, we have offshore ships, and of course, special purpose ships like the FPSOs, uh, which are used in the oil and gas industry. You can see a couple of ships here, are really huge sometimes. Um, yeah, different types. And have a look. We have types. So, types of cargo ships, you can have the container ships. And these uh, are cargo ships that carry intermodal containers, okay, uh, from uh, uh, from the sea or from one country, and then these containers can now be transferred into trucks for road transport. That's why I call it intermodal containers. Containers are normally in twenty feet and forty feet containers. Yeah. Then we have lake freighters. They are bulk carriers that transport goods through. The Great Lakes, like the Water Lake and all that. Then we also have port cargo. Um, no, sorry, we now have unloading of ships. Okay, unloading uh, container ships. The port cargo cranes are used uh, when you go to the ports. The cranes are there. We we'll look at some of them during our industry visits. Yeah, they are used for the con carrying this container ship. Other modern equipment are being implemented for efficient logistics management. Decision making for transport modes very important. How do you select among the five modes we have talked about? There are so many uh, things that we need to consider, and the things or the factors we need to look at um, are cost, speed, distance, capacity, capability, appropriateness, and other considerations like feasibility. So, cost first, you need to look at how much does each of these uh, modes cost you when you want to transport a, a specific good or service. No, yeah, then we are looking at goods mainly, yeah. Okay, so 
you can compare all the five, air, land, road, rail, pipeline, any of them. And when you look at the speed, do you, um, so if you look at costs, you may want to select the cheapest for the particular commodity. But sometimes costs may not be of essence there, but the speed, the delivery time. So you look at it, so it depends on whether the speed is, uh, is, is, is what is your priority or the cost, which is your priority. Then distance, some uh, goods cannot be carried over a certain distance to the road or rail. They may have to go by sea. So you need to look at that. Looking at the availability of those uh, transport services within the distance which you want to transport the things. Capacity, that's whether the mode you are selecting can carry the volume of the consignment. Then capability, then we can look, there we are looking at the nature of the consignment. For example, if you want to carry uh, vehicles, will uh, cargo, um, uh, air, freight be able to carry cars? Normally, no, you have to move those ones by, sorry. Yeah, you have to move those ones by sea, mainly, or by trucks, the appropriateness. And customer preference. Sometimes the customer says that I want my things to be airlifted. So you have to also look, look at that. And if that's what the customer wants, why not? Another consideration like flexibility, whether you can always change the mode at a point if you don't want. So these are the considerations. So that ends this lecture also. Thank you.